Hi guys! So now we're going to talk about the total project cost. So kapag sinabi natin cost, of course, it talks about the allotted money for that certain construction project. So itatakil namin sa inyo kung ano yung parts ng total project cost at kung saan ginagamit yung money allotment for those parts. So let's start! So, dito tayo sa general part. So, probable total cost is a major concern of the client throughout the planning design and construction phases of the project. The probable total capital cost, often used to establish budgets for a typical project, is made up of number one, professional engineering cost. So, sa professional engineering cost, it includes the professional fees of the engineers na kailangan dun sa construction project na yun. So, minsan kasi sa construction project, hindi lang ni isang engineer ang kailangan dyan. It depends on the specialization and expertise na required for that construction project. So, so number two, construction cost. So, sa construction cost, it includes the estimated total construction cost of the facility or establishment. So, ito yung um, whole construction cost na kailangan for the whole construction. So, so number three, legal and land cost. So, itong number 3 and 4, magkasama itong dalawang to. Ang um, legal and land cost and number 4, owner's cost, including project administration, staffing, financing, and other overhead. So, si sa number 3 and 4, it covers the probable total project cost like sa lupa and the interest for the borrowed money. So, sa so number 5, the last one, contingency allowance for unknowns. So, con sa contingency allowance for unknowns, it is the money allotment for the emergencies that might occur during the construction projects. So, itong limang parts na to will be further discussed by my groupmates. So, hope you'll uh, watch the video till the end. Good day, everyone. I'll recap ko lang po yung report ng group. 8 about professional engineering cost so hello everyone i'm angela may grueso and i will discuss about professional engineering cost professional engineering cost a civil engineer is often engaged to make a study and to render a planning report on the contemplated project, including alternative solutions, layouts, and locations along with initial estimates of the probable project cost. This may involve alternative or phased implementation schemes which add flexibility to the project. The study and report phase may include the cost for field or traffic surveys, planning analysis, geotechnical explorations and analysis, in addition to the direct engineering cost. So, meron tayong tinatawag na study and report phase at included dito ang cost for traffic surveys and the likes. At ito ay kasali sa preliminary phase. The cost of coordination, evaluation, implementation, and compliance have increased correspondingly. The extent of these concerns may not be identified during the study and report phase, and sometimes not even after final plans and specifications have been prepared. The estimated probable total cost of the project based on the study and report phase must be understood to be preliminary in nature. So, sabi ko nga kanina, preliminary phase siya kasi bago ang detailed design, preliminary muna. So, andun yung mga pag-aaral or study phase and from that, mag estimate na yung mga civil engineers. Because projects may vary widely in nature and scope, 
The study and report phase is important because its implementation determines the scope and development of the entire project and its ultimate capital and life cycle cost. So, ibig sabihin ng capital, yun yung pag-construct siya, yung magagastos, then yung life cycle cost naman, yung cost kapag nag operate na siya at Included dito ang maintenance cost, operating cost, etc. So, ibig sabihin nito na sa study and report phase pa lang, dapat malinaw na or maganda na ang pagsusurvey at mga investigation kasi yun yung foundation ng magiging scope. So, kung mas specific siya at mas maganda ang preliminary phase mas magiging maayos ang detailed design o yung con construction at pag-estimate ng engineer. During the final design and construction phase, additional surveying and geotechnical engineering services may be needed. Actually, ang geotechnical engineering services daw ang pinaka-crucial na part kasi we don't know what's underneath the underground of the building. So, mahirap malaman unless so kain talaga ang lahat ng pupa under the building. Also, special or additional engineering services not originally identified may be required by the client or recommended by the civil engineer. So, kapag may special or additional services, syempre may additional na bayad rin sa civil engineer. So, that's all. Thank you. Let us recall the important information about construction costs. Construction costs, it is usually about studying the preliminary estimate of the project and also its alternatives. So we need to remember that when it comes to construction costs, the cost estimates are only approximate since the final drawings and some specifications are not yet final or it is still undecided. Uh, when it comes to construction costs, we should also consider inflation since uh, during the construction of the project, uh, we may experience inflation when it comes to the materials and also the labors or the workers depending upon the timing and also the season of the construction. We should also remember and take note that the construction cost is the estimated total cost of the construction. So the cost must be approved by the client itself. So kailangan natin tandaan na, na yung total cost ng ating construction ay parating pasok dapat sa budget ng ating client. And also, under construction costs are mainly about construction materials and workers or labors. So, nakapaloob sa construction cost kadalasan ay tungkol lang sa materials or sa construction materials at saka sa workers or sa labors. Legal, Land, Administration, Staffing, and Financial Costs these costs include the following, the audits, the cost of issuing bond, the land costs, and the interest for borrowed money during the construction. All of these are part of the probable total project costs. And it can be best estimated in cooperation with the client because it is usually outside the control of the civil engineer. Contingency Allowance before we tackle contingency allowance, let me first define what is contingency. So, contingency is something that might happen such as an emergency. A contingency is an event or a potential negative event that may occur in the future such as economic recession, natural disaster, or fraudulent activity. So, yung contingency 
is an event that may or may not occur but must be dealt of pag nangyari, pag nangyari na. The word contingency implies that the potential of an event is foreseeable. So, what is contingency allowance? In the context of project management or construction project, it is an amount of money that is included to cover potential events that are not specifically accounted for in a cost estimate. The purpose is to compensate for the uncertainty inherent in cost and time estimates as well as unpredictable risk exposure. So yung contingency allowance or yung contingency budget is the money na nakaset aside para makover yung unexpected cost throughout the construction process. So yung money, yung contingency allowance is unreserved and is not allocated to one area of the work. And this simply insurance lang siya against other costs. To provide for intangible costs, contingency should routinely be added to the basic cost estimate. It is common practice to add 20% or more to the estimated probable total project cost at the completion of the study and report phase. 10% naman ang i-allocate at the completion of final design and 5% na lang when the construction bids is known or pagtapos na yung construction bids. So, habang mas nagiging detailed yung plano or mas nagiging finalized na yung design o yung plano, mas nakikinita or mas makikita ang mga dapat paghandaan ng mga risk at pag allocate ng budget. So, by identifying the risk, mas makikita natin or mas malalaman natin kung saan natin i-allocate ang ating mga budget at kung ilan or magkano or how much ang kakailanganin natin na budget. As the project moves forward through phases, more becomes known about project details and costs. Until the completion of the project, the final project cost becomes a known quantity. Estimate of probable total project cost should be periodically revised by the engineers as the design moves forward and more information becomes known. So to summarize our topic, which is total project cost non-engineering, the costs that lie outside the knowledge and control of civil engineers are legal, land, administration, staffing, financial costs, and contingency allowance. So, what are these costs? First, we have legal costs. So, legal costs, it has something to do with the lawyers. It may be the lawyer's fee, which is outside the control and knowledge of civil engineers. Land costs. Under land, the role of the role of civil engineers is to inspect, survey, or investigate the land or the site in which the project would take place, while the client's role or responsibility is to have legal papers of the land whether it is owned or rented. Administration Staffing So, the client can choose which people to hire as his or her staff that will work on the project and these people will work alongside with the civil engineers. Financial costs and contingency allowance. So the client or the owner is the most I mean the owner's most important function is to manage risks and it is her his or her decision whether to execute or not the project. So, contingency allowance, it is a number added to an estimate for a project cost that will cover some of element of risk or uncertainty. It is a form of mitigation but should not be a first alternative and should be used only as a part of complete risk mitigation effort. So, when setting the contingency allowance, it must not be too high or too low. So, according to the Code of Ethics, under Fundamental Canons, 
it is stated that civil engineers shall perform services only in their areas of their competence. It also says that civil engineers shall undertake to perform engineering assignments only when qualified by education or experience in the technical field of engineering involved. Civil engineers may also accept assignments requiring education or experience outside their own field of competence, provided that their services are restricted to those phases of the project in which they are qualified. So, all of the other phases of the project shall be performed by qualified persons such as associates, consultants, or employees. And lastly, civil engineers shall not use the specialty engineering titles such as structural engineer, transportation engineer, um, construction engineer, and others. So these titles must not be used without the PIS specialist accreditation. So that's all for our report. Thank you for listening and God bless.